Posse, it's Kim here. I'm bringing you a chat with Mokshini, who manages to convey her world in a unique and fabulous way. Hi, Mokshini. Welcome to Art Supply Posse. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, it's my pleasure. I'm really excited for this chat. So I'm going to start with a question that I ask everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, tailored to them because everyone's name is different, but I'd like to know first, who is Mokshini? <laughs> Mokshini yeah. is me. So I'm originally Sri Lankan, so I have like 100 million names. Um, <laughs> Mokshini is my first name, but yeah. I never I never got called Mokshini. It just was like a no one could actually pronounce it, my mom said. So they called me by my second name, which was Nadisha. <laughs> Right. But anyway, for my art stuff, I go with my first name, which is Mokshini. Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That yeah, makes sense. exactly. Yeah. You get, at least you get to pick which one, you know. Exactly. I have so many <laughs> options. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with options. Um, so can you tell us how did illustration come to be your passion in life? Um, wow. Okay. So I think I've always, uh, I've always drawn, I think, um, it's just been a natural thing that's, that I've always done. And as a little kid, my mom really, um, she was also a preschool teacher. She really embraced, uh, my drawing and sent me to classes and bought me art supplies. So I think from a young age, it's always been kind of there, but I never really, you know, took it seriously. Um, you know, (laughs) I think it's just like a lot of people think it's just not a viable Korea, yeah. especially, you know, in parts of the world like New Zealand, where, you know, the market is a lot smaller. So I studied fashion um, and during my college degree. Um, but my, my mentors there were just like, you need to just like, you know, stop trying to sew and just keep drawing. <laughs> because I was terrible. And so I did my master's, my postgrad in um, illustration. And so my illustrations naturally sort of started having this fashion flair. Um, yeah. And that's, yeah. And so now I kind of, I guess my main predominant thing that I focus on is fashion illustration. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I would say I've drawn forever, just my whole life. And I slowly, you know, by the age of like 24, I took it seriously, um, as like a career option. Yeah. So was anyone else in your family artistic as well? Like you said, you know, your mum was a preschool teacher. My my dad. My dad, <laughs> yeah. Oh. So my dad, my dad passed away when I was very young, but he was a he was a um, amazing artist as well. Uh, he he has he had a very loose hand, and from the work that I've seen of his, I'm like, wow, we have a very similar style, which is really cool. Um, mm. So my dad was very good at drawing. Mum was very like crafty, like she's very good with just making stuff, you know. And yeah. so it's just always been like, you know, one of our things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's fair. Yeah. And I suppose that that early encouragement too. Totally. I mean, I, I totally think that's like the main the reason why I'm still doing it is because mm-hmm. they really kind of pushed it even, you know, oh, she's good at it. So she's she's got to spend more time embracing it and nurturing it. Yeah. Um, so I've been going to art classes ever since I was like four, you know, just yeah. forever. Yeah. yeah. So with your postgrad in illustration, what's, what's it like – like study <laughs> that sort of thing. You I know, know what I mean? Yeah. If you look at particularly your work, it is free and it's it's you know organic. But is it like mm. that? You can't be like that when you're studying, surely. Like, is it more strict, or do you did you have that option to sort of take it where you wanted to? I think I think post grad one was one of the smartest things I did because honestly, I didn't want to do it. It was more that, uh, that was like when the recession hit New Zealand and there was no jobs out there. So my teacher was like, do your postgrad and teach on the side. It'd be perfect. And so I was teaching and studying, but, um, it was really cool because I think I found my voice in those, in those two years. Um, and it wasn't so much about me trying to find my style, but like my teacher would encourage me to kind of hang everything up. And like, so I had walls of just illustrations and, Mm -hmm she would be like, okay, what is the story you're trying to tell? And then I think towards the end of the two years, I finally figured out what I kept kind of um, illustrating. And it was all about just like that real person capturing that real girl, Um, Mm -hmm. the antithesis of like fashion, basically, Mm -hmm. like moving away from that ideal and kind of pushing the boundaries in terms of, you know, what we consider beautiful. And I think that's what I was trying to do, but, you know, didn't realize. And I think, uh, when you are kind of immersed in that world every day for like two years, you slowly start like building this body of work that you're kind of like, oh, that's what I'm trying to say. 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you don't even realize when you're in it, but you have to step back and you're kind of like, okay. And then that's, I think that's my style is what I'm trying to say. It's not so mm-hmm. much what, what materials I use or what, you know, line quality or whatever. That's not my style. It's just, um, I think the message that I'm trying to put out. Yeah. Um, yeah. So do you think that, having that thing of doing it every day and and then being encouraged to hang it all on the wall did oh. that kind of help you solidify what it was you were doing yeah totally I think it's like a great I still teach to um freshmen and I tell them all the time to do that I think it's such a great way of reflecting because otherwise you're kind of just producing without um kind of taking the time out to like a, you know reflect on your own work um, mm-hmm. But I think it's just like a very um, – it's also how people work, I think, in postgrad especially. You kind of learn different methodologies and, to like, and you learn how you work as a person, as an artist. You learn about yourself and you're yeah. like, oh, I respond to, um, you know, drawing in the morning and then doing this at night or I don't actually work well at night or I respond to having all my images up on the wall so I can reflect. And I think that was one of those methodologies that really, like, worked for me. Yeah. Um, and really encourage I think that really helps yeah reflecting mm-hmm. so how do you then like obviously you've had you had that fashion background mm-hmm. trying you know trying to you tried your hand at fashion creating it yeah and sewing perhaps wasn't your forte <laughs> yeah and how do you go with obviously you're saying you, you're wanting to represent women as they are as opposed mm-hmm. to this airbrush nonsense that we see like and right. have seen for years right um like i i'm i'm nearly 42 and I, all the women i've seen in magazines especially as a teenager were all so-called perfect you know right, exactly never, never, never like there is now where you actually see a bit more mm-hmm. women that look like women diversity but, yeah yeah how do you how do you go about like bringing that diversity through in your work like especially if you when you are at a fashion show or or, or something like that mm. like or is it just that there's more of it now than there used to be I think in, you know, real women I think it is almost cooler now to have like that real girl so now it's finally yeah. like caught on but in the <laughs> beginning it's very hard because you know you're pushing like this ideal and then the client will get back to you and you're like oh actually can you make her a little bit more you know beautiful basically <laughs> um and it's, it's very hard it's like because as a commercial illustrator you have to understand at the end of the day you're trying to please your client yeah. and so yeah you'll have the jobs where you do what they want you to do and then you'll have your jobs which is well, for me, it's just drawing for myself where I truly get to express, you know, what I want to express. And then hopefully people respond. And I think from what I've noticed, I think people really relate and that's the relatability is what people connect with. Um, and so, yeah, you have a, a girl that's struggling to get ready in the morning and you're sketching her in this, you know, terrible, like she looks terrible, but people relate to it. You know, they're like, Oh my God, that was me yesterday morning. You know, it's just like so much, um, I don't know. It's more fun. And I also think like fashion illustration, especially is very serious. A lot of it, you know, it's very hyper real. It's very just, you know, it's very serious and that's so not my personality. I want it to, I want my work to be really fun and colorful and vibrant and just kind of funny. That's yeah. what I'm, and satirical almost. It's just taking the piss out of fashion, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> no, it's it just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, it is. It look, it really is that whole. Like, if you really sat down and think about it, and st- it is insane. Like, yeah, just yeah, it's, the extremes it's, people go to. Yeah, yeah, it's so far from reality. It's just, it's just yeah. unbelievable. So then, how do you? Let's say either you're doing the work for yourself, or hey, you've got a you've got a commercial client that's actually happy mm-hmm. for you. to draw the real world woman mm-hmm. how do you like what is your setup do people come to you do you go to them how's your um, preferred work uh, a mixture so I mean Instagram's totally changed the game so it's like sometimes clients come to me directly I have an agency as well um in in New Zealand and New York and it's been like a nice mixture of work coming th- through the two so it's kind of editorial work but also a lot of live drawing events I feel like in New York especially live drawing has kind of taken off mm-hmm. um, especially with fashion brands because I feel like uh, everything's going online now and brands are really struggling to pull customers in and mm-hmm. so they're kind of like you know well having a photographer isn't enough let's have an illustrator so that 
someone is here to sketch the people. They've got a sketch to take away at the end of the event and they feel special. And that whole novelty thing now is like really kind of, you can, I can feel it in the last two years. It's I've been very busy in that regard. Um, just live events. Um, so yeah, a mixture of it is like agency work. And honestly, I think as an illustrator, you can't just go online and look for work. It's, yeah. it's, it's promoting yourself and pitching, pitching work. And it's like, you know, Oh, this brand is really neat. I'm going to pitch an idea with them. Let me put together a press kit. And it's a lot of a lot of that kind of like um, customizing the jobs you want and just going after it because a lot of the time with this kind of work I feel like people the clients don't even know what they want you know they can't yeah. envision it but if you're like hey I can sketch this up for you in this way and you could promote your product this way they're like oh that's a that's a fresh new idea yeah. you know it's um yeah it's that kind of approach it's kind of uh, a little bit a few more steps <laughs> so you do work across different like you use different art materials yes Look, this is from me browsing browsing your work online mm-hmm. why do you do that like it's, I know a lot of people tend to specialize in one medium or another mm. I think it's like it totally depends on um like I said I like tapping into what I said earlier about um I don't want to like limit myself to this one style you know and mm-hmm. I feel like I go through phases as well I think even in the last two years my styles constantly evolved so in in those phases I'll experiment with different materials and uh, like in the beginning I used to use I used to use a lot of watercolor and watercolor is awesome because it kind of encourages the spontaneity you start to learn to embrace your mistakes you kind of um you get better at being more confident and direct um which is what I loved about it and I love watercolor for live ev- live drawing events for that reason because it's just quicker and you're just yeah you know creating in that spontaneous moment and then things like gouache I love for different purposes more editorial kind of pieces where things are probably better more graphic um Mm -hmm. a little bit flatter like richer colors um I love gouache and acrylic easily um as well but acrylic I guess is a little bit harder to um acrylic I like but it's like a little bit harder to it's less malleable than gouache Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the, the pigment and gouache is just amazing, which is, I, I love gouache, <laughs> but not many people use it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So I guess, in, yeah, no, that's, it's kind of a point of difference too, I guess that you, mm. that you are using it. like, why not? <laughs> exactly. No, it's like, like I said, it's like, you can have different effects, but your, your voice and what you're trying to say is always going to be the same. Mm. So I think that's what I kind of like like when I teach students they're always like how did you develop your style and I'm like I don't think that should be your focus your focus should be what your message is and then your style will just naturally evolve you know it will just come yeah yeah and I think it would certainly doing it as often as now that you do it wouldn't matter almost what you picked up it Mm. your style Come your through. voice would just come through yeah totally I think it just has and you may be it may be subconscious it may you may not even be aware of it but I think it's funny when people are like I so knew that was your piece and I'm like oh <laughs> thanks like you don't even know yourself that you kind of have this hand yeah yeah mm. it just comes naturally exactly mm-hmm. so you mentioned that you do teach as well um what's that like the teaching world Oh, the teach is so funny because I think I did it as like a, oh, fine, I'll do it if I have to. Because basically, <laughs> <laughs> no, like in the beginning, in the beginning, now I love it. Of course, I love it now. But no, yeah, in the yeah. beginning, it was like, oh, you can, you know, basically my mentor was like, you can teach part time and you can have some of your expenses paid. So it was kind of like a deal. And yeah. so I did it and it was, it exposed me to so much. My mum was a teacher too. So like I appreciated teachers, but I didn't realize how rewarding it was. Um, and I think when, when students actually finally get drawing, cause I think a lot of them come in and they're like, oh, I can't draw. What's the point of me even trying? Like, you know, um, but towards the end they get it and they're like, Oh, you know, I can actually draw what's in my mind and put it on paper. And that's yeah. such a, that's such a cool thing. And I think, um, you know, I think especially in design, it's so important that visual communication, you don't have to be this amazing painter or you know showcase and exhibitions but you just need to be able to communicate your ideas and you sense that a lot in fashion when students become frustrated they'll have a garment in their mind and they can't get it on paper so how to kind of alleviate that and just you know um 
yeah, just go for it. Like, have fun with drawing. It's like that. It's like it's like everyone pushes math and English and all that kind of stuff. And then as you get older, the drawing stuff is you know is, is put on the back burner. And so now you're twenty something and you're t- too shy to even show your work. But yeah. when you're five, you're like, look, mom, look at my awesome yeah. drawing. So you want to try and get to that like level again where you kind of want to share your work, even if it's bad or even if it's good, you know? You're still doing something. It's better than just. Exactly. 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 But I think people are just so scared and like judge just their own worst enemy because they kind of judge their own work and they're like, oh, Nadish, I don't want to show you. It's terrible. And I'm like, who cares? It's like, you know, you did it. It's awesome. Yeah. 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 It's certainly better than doing nothing. And, exactly. and, and you know what? You might then be able to look at it and realize, yeah, even the next it's day. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And also see, oh, look, but if I did this, then I might improve it and it might get better. So, yeah. Um, and I think that's the thing with drawing. It's not like, it's not black and white and it takes a, it takes a while. Like you have to kind of invest in it to get better at it. And, hmm. um, some people are just a little bit too scared to do that or don't want to do that. So <laughs> it's a process. It's a process. Like, yeah, even with my students, I'm like, it, you know, after 15 weeks, you're not going to be a professional. You just, no. you just tap the tip of the iceberg. Now you have to keep going for the rest yeah. of your life <laughs> to get better, better, you know? So anyway. So working with, working with students, you know, working with younger people, do they bring something different to, to the world of, of art that perhaps, you know, you don't see or you might not come across as often? It's interesting because, like, the classes I teach, there's, like, a mixture a mixture of students. So there's some that are adults, some that have kids, oh. some that, yeah. So, I mean, they're, they're freshmen, but um, I think especially it's, like, an American thing, you know, where um, a, lot of, a lot of people go back to school later, a lot of um, – they change over. So I have a mixture of students, honestly. Oh, okay. Um, they but must keep you on your toes. <laughs> they, do, they definitely. It's actually so different to teaching in New Zealand. I feel, um, yeah. yeah, like it's a different. It's a different energy because everyone's. Um, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like in New Zealand, everyone was kind of the same level. Whereas here, there's such a diverse group of people. There's someone that's super, super, you know, ahead of everyone else, and someone that's like really behind. So it's like catering to everyone's needs is very. Um, it's interesting. Uh, it's a challenge yeah (laughs) yeah but I really I love it I love it I think it's so it's so fun that's that's important so yeah just thinking of your recent work or is it just what the last thing you did (laughs) oh okay the last thing I did okay the most the last thing that I've completed was this cool collaboration Mm -hmm. with Vans um the sneakers and we did this video where we um did like a time lapse of me drawing and kind of it was more like a like an ad for their their new shoe thing. So there's that little world there where where you kind of become almost like not an ambassador, but you kind of become like a oh I don't know what the word is, <laughs> but you're you know you're wearing their stuff. I feel like there's such a market for it now. It's like you're kind of um, oh I yeah. hate the word influencer. Yes. I hate it, but it's you're kind of just like you're yes. promoting products, and I think that market for it in um, America is kind of really big. I'm sure in yeah. Australia as well. Um, but yeah, that was really fun. And then my the one that I'm currently working on is is this really cool collaboration with Patricia Field. I don't know if you know Patricia Field. She's like a a stylist. Um, did Sex in the City and like Devil Wears Prada yeah. styled all them. But she has um, this really awesome gallery in in Manhattan that's like um, she collaborates with artists and they paint on clothes and all that kind of stuff. And she saw my one of my hats that I painted on and she's like, can you do some hats and stock them in my store? So I'm kind of like working on that as well. So it's awesome having the skill, which you can kind of apply into other mediums and textile design has definitely been something that I really love doing as well. So um, a lot of textile design work with illustration has been really fun. Yeah. So are they are those are they individual? Like, are you painting individual hats? You know. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, they're hand painted. Different. Like they're all different. They're all different. Like it's like the whole concept of that store is like every garment is completely different. Wow. And all hand done. Um, and so uh, it's very like unique custom pieces. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is I I think I think that's where kind of fashion is going down now. Anyway. Yes. 
Yeah. Everyone's kind of going anti the whole mess. Yeah. Mess, mess, mess. I'm sick of mess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So have you ever yeah. worked digitally at all? Uh, yeah, I do. I mean, I – I did. I digitize most of my work, so I'll end up even if I hand do it, I'll end up scanning it mm-hmm. and photoshopping it. But um, only a few jobs do I do it entirely on the Wacom. It's usually if it's storyboarding, if it's something that is more um, internal. If you know what I mean, like for a big corporate company, mm-hmm. because they make so many changes yeah. in a day, so there's no point doing it by hand. No. Um, but yeah, for in terms of style, like it's not really my thing. I love like getting my hands messy and having to tidy up, and I like the whole process. I enjoy that. Yeah, I think it's important for me, and I think also, I there's no shortcuts when you're doing it by hand. You know, you're not you're not doing the eye drop tool and just matching the green exactly. You're trying to actually make the green from scratch, and you're learning. I feel like I learn more when I do things by hand. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. And it, yeah. it's sort of, in some ways, I suppose it wouldn't be quite as challenging to work digitally because you're not having to think about matching colors and, and as you say, and things like that. Like, I guess I think if you're a good digital artist, though, you have already mastered hand hand stuff. Like when students are like, "Oh, I want to go straight into di- digital," I'm like, "You can't do that without actually knowing how to draw on paper." Yep. So I think like when I see someone's digital work, I can still appreciate it because I can be like, okay, this person still knows how to draw. Oh, yeah. So I don't, you know, I don't dismiss the fact that they just enjoy drawing on the computer. Yeah. Like some people just like drawing yeah, on the computer. It's, it's almost like um, a medium. It's, it's, it's just. Exactly. It's just another tool, yeah. you know, and some people vibe with it and some people don't. But, um, yeah, I, I still I still can appreciate it. <laughs> I just don't want to do it. <laughs> No, yeah, <laughs> that's the beautiful thing about art, isn't it? Is there's just so much variety in, and exactly. Can, yeah, you can really do whatever works for you, and exactly, it's still fine. Mm-hmm. You still have an audience. Exactly, yeah. that's a good point. So, mm-hmm. do you have preferred brands of materials to use at all? Because we do, we do like to talk, you know, a little bit about brands if they're specifics. Oh, okay. Or do you, you um, buy everything and use everything? Yes, I'm totally that person because uh, sometimes I'm like, look, I'm going to just go for the cheap brand, you know, like, yeah. and um, they work just as good. And sometimes I'll go for the really good stuff. Yeah. Um, it's just high end. I mean, you can't be a poor artist these days. You got to have money. Yeah, true. <laughs> Everything. Those like art supplies are so expensive, but I always invest in like a good brush and like, um, like a good watercolor set. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I like, um, I don't know if you know Schmincke. Yes. yes. It's Schmincke and, um, Stad- uh, Stadler. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stadler. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I just I just go back and forth between stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then what else is there? I can't think off the top of my head. I'm sorry. No, no, that's okay. Yeah, but for the most part, I think I mean, sometimes I even just buy poster paint at, like, the dollar store, you know? Like, it's just whatever kind of – because also I think when I buy expensive stuff, I mentally kind of freeze up a little bit. <laughs> like, I kind of go, oh, no, this yeah. is um, – I remember my mom buying me like $250 worth of like watercolor inks. And I was just like, Oh my God, I can't use this. Like it's so free. I have to be careful. I have to choose the projects yes. I use this on. Cause this is really good. Uh-huh. And I don't like that. I want it to be like, ugh, whatever. Oh, I spilled some, you know? Yeah. So I try not to go too, um, you know, crazy with my, with my materials the last thing you want is to be scared of what you're using exactly I feel that way with paper as well like sometimes you know you can go and spend $25 a sheet on paper Mm -hmm. and you're just like um there's like you get become stifled a little bit because you're like I can't mess this up yeah so when when you are working at like the live events what sort of paper are you working on like is it a heavier paper or is it some totally yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. heavier paper like a watercolor, um, yeah, definitely a heavier weight. And sometimes the clients love like printing their logo at the bottom, so they'll do their own thing with their paper as well. Okay, but um, I think heavier is nice. A mixed media type, yeah, paper is good because then um, definitely for watercolors, yeah. So how many like how many images would you create at one of those live events? Like, is it are you are you doing lots or are you just doing a couple or does it just depend on like what the clients asked for or? Oh, okay. So like two days ago, I did this event at Neiman Marcus and it was like insane. It was back to back people. I had like a 
list happening at one point yeah. where people were just and I couldn't even fin- I couldn't finish half <laughs> of them but like I would say one drawing of a person would probably take 10 to 15 minutes <laughs> like full color ink so you know in a in an hour I can do at least five yeah which doesn't sound like a lot no, but it is but really. in the moment it's so much because you also like I don't I'm not the type to just sit there and draw them either I'm like I'm like talking with you I'm really trying to connect with you and mm-hmm. I'm trying to study the person's mannerisms because I like capturing like their essence you know yeah. so I'm not just drawing them in a standard pose I'm just seeing the way I'm drawing I'm trying to capture them in the way I see them yeah and so it's like a lot of um, analyzing that's happening as well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it takes a bit of time. But yeah, there's a lot of people, and sometimes yeah, that was a five hour w- event, and I was exhausted oh, afterwards. Wow. I was like, oh my god, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was pretty crazy. So it would would definitely be be better than if it was just you and someone in a studio, and you could just take your time to talk exactly that'd be so nice I mean I get my friends to do that all the time like okay you're modeling for me (laughs) yeah yeah for the next hour yeah free models it's great (laughs) makes you makes it a lot easier that's for sure not not as not as tiring exactly so if you have down like let's say after you you've done a you've done a five hour event or whatever uh-huh. downtime for you is that is that still doing something artistic or are you just switching off and like watching hours of TV or or something like that oh, totally that's so funny that's such a good question I feel like I um I want to do that <laughs> I want to do that so bad like there's days where I'm like oh, why can't I just like Netflix and watch Friends yeah. for like the next two hours and binge and like I can't I can't do that my brain doesn't let me do that I don't know why <laughs> so I'm like if in my downtime I'm probably like researching something or drawing something or and also being in a city where it's so just like even when you're at home you feel the energy you know mm-hmm. it's like or you're going in the sub when you see an exhibition and you're like oh I have to see that exhibition like something's always popping up and I feel like you don't ever really quite rest. Um, but it's not in a bad way. It's just like, and you're constantly stimulated. Yeah. And um, you have ideas to get out all the time. And I don't know, I think it's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, it, it, mm. Look, it keeps you, it, it keeps it, the flow going in, in some way. Ex- exactly. It keeps feeding the feeding the thing. Cause you know, there's day, there's moments when I'm creatively blocked mm-hmm. and then I, that's when I really, uh, I don't know. I feel like um, that's when a city like this is really, really important and good is because um, I have so many places to go to to kind of unblock my, you know, because, yeah, there's so much stuff happening. Yeah. Um, and I love just that I love keeping a sketchbook and I feel like um, everywhere I go there's there's something interesting to sketch and I love that. Um, and people aren't weird about me sketching them here. I feel like people are just very like, oh, cool, she's sketching me. I'll yep. just sit still. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice vibe. So do you, you do take a sketchbook with you everywhere, even if you're not doing an actual paid job? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Totally. I mean, I try to draw every day. I think that's the goal. Yeah. Is to even if I'm not inspired, or even if um, it's just just to sit and even even if it's just a little doodle just to keep that practice going because it is just a habit um at the end of the day and I think um in the past I used to be like I'm not inspired I'm just gonna you know I'm just gonna wait till it comes um but I think over time I've learned that if you're an illustrator like it's your job to illustrate so you should just go to work every day and just you know treat it like a job and be drawing every day um and I think that's been really nice too. And it's taken pressure off making me feel like each drawing has to be perfect. Yep. So I'll go into the studio, I'll draw something. Ah, oh, it's not that good. That's okay. There's tomorrow sense of, Oh, uh, you know, this, this drawing yeah. has to be amazing. Um, yeah, nice. I think, uh, just little practices, I think, especially after I went freelance and how to like manage my time mm-hmm. and structure my day has been, um, yep. really interesting. Yeah. It would, it <laughs> yeah. would. Because, a bit challenging. Because at the end of the day, if you're not showing up and working, you you're not getting paid. Yeah. You're not ex- exactly. And then also, if you're not yeah. mentally there, like if you're not mentally, like I feel like creativity requires so much stuff. Like you have to be relatively happy. You have to be relatively inspired. You have to be, you know, motivated, and you have to keep your energy yeah. mentally up to be creating yeah. good work. 
So that's also important. So if you if you were to travel, like, you know, whether it was to return to New Zealand or, or somewhere else, would you be taking a sketchbook and, and drawing materials with you? Oh, my God, yes, absolutely. That's, like, the first thing I pack. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, everything else can wait. I have to take a sketchbook. I went to Europe um, just over a month ago, and that was all I did was just sketch over there because I think you – you remember moments so much more yes. when you sketch. It's not It's not like taking a photograph and you kind of – you don't even process yes. when you take a photograph. You just kind of, you know. But when I sketch something, I, like, remember exactly how that building looked. And there's so many times when I've sketched something, we've gotten lost, and then we've found it again because I remembered it from my sketchbook. Yeah. You know, like, sketching just helps you – I don't know. It, it yes. makes you more present. Well, it slows you down, I guess, because you've got to – Take the time to sketch yes. whatever that, that that thing is, which slows you down. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So do you, is, mm. when you're in another country, like sketching, do you, is there, do you see differences in your work when you're not at home? Yeah, I think there is. A, I think it kind of, every place has their own, its own little influence in the mm. way that you approach it. Um, I know that when I'm in New Zealand, my the colours completely yep. change. Um, when I'm in, when I was in Prague, I was so inspired by the colors there. It was so pastel and light. Um, and I I think that kind of informed my work when Mm -hmm. I got back to New York and, uh, I don't know. I think it's when I'm, when I'm traveling, I think color is a really important thing that I observe. Um, and yeah, I think, yeah, Europe was amazing because I, I'd never really been to like, uh, Budapest or Prague Mm -hmm. or that part of the world. So seeing their art, I was like, yeah. wow, okay. Okay, yeah. this is interesting, yeah. And I guess yeah, every really every nice. place, the light is different, the buildings are different. Every, and, um, yeah. Yes. Totally, that's such a good point also, the light. The yeah. light changes all the time. It's like some, some places have a hue of blue, some it's like a dusty pink. It's like it's very, yeah. yeah. Once you start to learn to recognize all those little the color the color changes, it's like yeah. it's so nice. Yeah, if I think of Australia's yeah. light, it's particularly in summer, it's it's harsh, it's really strong, but then it creates really cool mm. shadows. Like you know, I like to right to go out in the middle of the day. Right. And some of the shadows are just more more interesting to me than the actual <laughs> things creating them. The, yeah, the, yeah wow. so it's completely different. Oh, yeah, wow, that's so interesting. Looping back to yeah. the teaching for a moment, do you actually do yeah. any like mm-hmm. more private teaching, so one on one or smaller groups, as opposed to the school system of teaching? I've 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 done it. Yeah. I've dabbled in it. I haven't made it like a, a thing thing, but I've done like workshops and um, just one off type yeah. things with people with you know um, not kids, yeah. not just yeah, kids, older. But like older. Uh, yeah, and um, that's been really fun. Yeah, I think it's just like teaching people to think a different mm-hmm. way is really fun. Or just, um, you know, some people see in line, some people see in shape, and some people, they come to me and they're like, oh, I can't sketch. But the minute they realize, oh, I see in shape yes. and not in line, yeah. you know, then all of a sudden they can sketch. It's like, oh, like understanding that little thing that you're good at and identifying it and um, – you know, I think that's really that's really fun when you help someone discover that. And yeah. then it just becomes their favourite thing to do and that's cool. <laughs> yeah. So what would you say to somebody who, you know, let's say they've listened to, to us chat and talk about, you know, fashion illustration and, and, and sketching and things like that. What would you say to someone who thinks, you know what, I'd, I'd like to try that, not quite sure where mm. to start, but I'd like to try that. What could you suggest to somebody? I say try it. (laughs) Totally try it. You have to just do it. I think um, it's funny because, like, sometimes, like, a a blank piece of paper is, like, the scariest thing ever. Mm -hmm. And just getting over that little hurdle and just just drawing something and get, like, putting yourself in a zone where it's just judgment-free and you're just uh, producing work and you're kind of uh, – even when you just – even if you're just drawing for yourself, you don't have to share it with anyone. Just yeah. drawing it for yourself and, like, creating work for yourself. Because I think um, last year I kind of experienced that too where I felt like I was oh, – I'm just drawing for Instagram. You know, I'm drawing it for the people. And you forget, yeah. like, oh, I'm actually just drawing what people – I'm just drawing what I know people like. I'm not drawing for myself. Um, and so I kind of started like a journal where I just sketched for myself and I didn't share it with anyone. And that was really nice. And 
eventually that stuff informed my final pieces that I shared in the end, but it was because it came from a pure place, you know? Um, So I think for someone who wants to start out, I I mean, just go for it and just realize um, that drawing is like one of those things that you have to kind of invest in. It's like you have to nurture it and spend time, you know, practicing. And I feel like a lot of times they try it, you know, two, three times and they're like, I'm I'm not good at it. But you have to really uh, give it a chance, yeah, to kind of blossom. It takes time. Yeah, it's a, it's like any skill. And like any skill, right. And it's like, you know, I, I yeah, I don't like people think, oh, you're so talented because I'm like, oh, actually, I just like practice my ass off every day, <laughs> you know, like, sure, yeah. it's like a bit of maybe some natural flair, but, you know, it, you know, most of it is just sitting down in the studio and redrawing that hand a hundred times yeah. till I get it right, you know, so – yeah so where's the best place for people to find you linking show notes and everything but i do like to ask and you know because not everyone likes to click links they just like to hear it fair fair um after i've totally like um mocked instagram i think instagram is the best place to find me (laughs) um (laughs) yeah so instagram uh, it's just my my first name uh mokshini m-o-k-s-h-i-n-i um, yeah, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty good at posting there and keeping, uh, I try and, you know, I think most of my work there is very personal. I don't, um, there's a few collaborations on there, but a lot of it, the work that I post is mine and, uh, you know, my experiences and New York, it's kind of almost like my little, my love letters to New York, my experiences here. So, Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I browsed through the other day. I actually went back and scrolled through like lots of your older pictures just yeah. to you, you, just to see what's there, and it's it's quite fun to be able to do that. Like instead of just seeing what's been That's posted true. recently, the fact you can go back and go, oh, look at this. And in some instances, with some people, you can see that style yes. develop. You know, and I change. think I think even when that I look, the- I do that quite often as well, just to see how much I've shifted, and I feel like my work has definitely become so much more graphic and colorful than like two years ago. Like yes. two years ago, I was very kind yeah. of like l- line work and kind of just a splash of color here and there, but um, way more, I think, playful. I think I'm kind of becoming a little bit bolder. Yeah. But um, yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, yeah definitely. It's good to see. It's just, Evolving. and mm-hmm. I guess in, it too, it, just, it reminds you that, as you say, you've got to practice. Nobody's no. perfect. Uh, no one's born as you know perfect, a perfect artist. The world's greatest artist. Like it just no. doesn't happen. And at least the thing is, you can do that. You can scroll through and see. Oh, look, you know, two years ago they used mm-hmm. to do this, and now they've changed this. And whilst that was great, then now right. it's even better. Like it, it, it is encouraging. Mm-hmm. I think you know, for, especially if you are quite critical, which I think a lot of us are. Um, we're quite critical of what we do and yeah. and how bad it might we think it is and it's like yeah no yeah. everyone everyone has and there's yeah you're constantly going to be evolving there's no like you know end to this so in five years I'm going to be like oh this, that, that was terrible <laughs> but you know um, <laughs> and then just understanding that and just kind of putting your work out there because I feel like also a lot of people have a fear of sharing their work because they, they don't think it's good enough and yeah. it's kind of like you know you're going to always feel that way as an artist. You're kind of so hard on yourself and you're kind of like, you know, oh, this could be better, this could be better. At a certain point, you've got to just let it go and just be like, you know what, um, yeah, just share. That's what art's about, yeah, sharing. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, I think I think we've covered pretty, we did well. um, a lot here. <laughs> I think, yeah, we have done well, definitely, definitely. <laughs> Thank you so uh, thanks, much Kim. for I really appreciate That's it. Fun. Yes. <laughs> Hi again, Posse. Did you enjoy our chat? I really hope so. It was fascinating to hear a little bit about the fashion industry. It's only something I know from obviously being a consumer of fashion. Uh, so it was just really nice to hear about what it's like to actually be an illustrator, you know, working at live events and creating some fantastic artwork. Make sure you head over to Mokshini's Instagram account to check out her work. Um, I'm sure you will agree with me. It is really quite cool what she does. Remember, you can support us by becoming a patron. Head over to patreon.com forward slash art supply posse to find out more. Bye for now.